Alright guys, it's mod 16. Things are different. And for those of you that play fighter and are curious about PvP, this build... Um, well, it's not even really specifically a build. I'm, I'm gonna be doing things a little different for this video. Um, since mod 16 is a lot different, uh, and things are still fairly new to a lot of people, uh, I don't, I mean, uh, to be honest, I haven't really specifically tested everything, so this is just gonna be a generic, um, advice from me video, I guess, I don't know. Um, it's not like I have a blueprint for, okay, first you're gonna, go, you're gonna go build this, and then you're gonna go build that, and it's your ending ending product is gonna look like this um, I'm really just gonna guide through generically um, I'll probably do a couple little rambles and rants here and there it's all good info though so if you're taking PvP seriously um, take my advice seriously because I, I, I do know fighter in PvP in a PvP environment very well I play this class very well I'm a very smooth uh, I have a lot of practice with this class. Maybe I don't know all of the best um, items that there are. Maybe I don't know a lot of PvE stuff. I'm not very good at. Uh, I'm really just good at PvP. And you might have better gear than me. You might have better enchantments than I do. If you notice, I have no enchantments slotted. Uh, and it's kind of for a reason. Uh, my reason is that I don't want you guys to compare your enchantments to my enchantments. Um, and I also don't want to specifically, you know, have you guys look at my enchantments that I'm using and assume that they're the best enchantments to use. Um, so I, I'm really kind of just doing it so you don't waste your AD or your time specifically trying to copy everything that I use. I will tell you what my advice are or my advice is for um, for your enchantments. So don't worry, um, I'm not hiding anything from you whatsoever. Um, so I guess we'll start from the left to the right. So the character sheet, you know, as you can see, this is my gear. Um, first thing I want to tell you is that if you have other gear that you prefer to use, then by all means, this is not, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you specifically what to do, what to build. Um, I'm just going to give you my advice. I will hover over all of my things so you can see what they do. Um, and I will tell you why I use each of these things. Some of them I kind of switch around a little bit because I don't exactly know what is better than other things. So I'm, you know, everybody is going to be experimenting for a while and I'm obviously I'm included in that. Uh, I have not been playing mod 16 as much as I was playing other mods and that's not on purpose. It's not because I don't want to play. It's just really because I've been doing a lot of uh, things outside in you know, my life. And I haven't really had a whole lot of time to, you know, just devote to this game uh, as of recently. But that doesn't mean it's going to consistently be that way. And as you can see, I, you know, I have been playing a, a fairly decent amount. So, first thing I want to tell you is that the Spy Guild's gear um, is good is a good starting point. Uh, I remember that I started with Spy Guild. I just got everything Spy Guild pretty much. Uh, and then I just change things around from there if you have plenty of you know currency to buy them I mean why not you know unless you have something more important, but I'm gonna assume that since you're watching this video and you're Potentially if you hear this, I mean you're still listening So I'm gonna assume that this is your priority right now So I'm gonna be talking as if this is what you're prioritizing to to build for next in uh, in Neverwinter so, um, spy guilds, if you got the currency, just dump it on spy guilds. Um, if you have no idea what the hell you're going to be building or what you're doing, if you're really new, I would just recommend maybe starting with some stuff like that. Because um, it's pretty safe, pretty safe gear. Uh, if you are really newbie and you are not very confident in your PvP skills, especially with fighter, I would advise you to go more of a defensive approach of this build. Uh, if you really feel like you just want to go out there and you know play the glass cannon type of build then just go a more offensive type of version of this build um, you can go for items that have more power or give you uh, percent damage increases um, 
I don't know. Maybe there is a better main hand offhand here for uh, fighter. I, you know, like I said, I'm not very PVE savvy. This 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 really just looked fine to me. Um, so these these are the weapons that I uh, went with. Also, just so you know, if you look at my shield, it's pretty ridiculous. You can die. The um, the alabaster shield, pretty ridiculous colors. Maybe it was a bug for some reason for me specifically. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that this is the just the normal pink dye with a white dye, uh, and it has a pretty uh, pretty pretty bright display. If you do not have Sandy's pants um, and you have no idea what these are, uh, it's a guild stronghold thing. They're from a while back. I'm sure that you can find a video on how to get these. They're uh, pretty pretty good in my opinion um, I mean if you're just stat hungry you can go for different pants but in PvP you are gonna want things that proc in your favor um, so the more procs the better so um, I don't know like things like Sandy's pants you know like this is this is gonna proc something in your favor and the more cooldowns you have, the more things that will be working, you know, that you, you'll forget about Sandy's Pants. It's not like when somebody hits you, you're going to be like, oh, he just got Sandy's Pants done, you know. It's just really going to happen um, to save your ass when you're not paying attention. So if you get items that do things for you like this, it'll make, your, it'll make it better for you because you'll be able to focus more on... Um, the things that you are trying to learn, like how to, how to you know, mechanically place yourself and use your shield at the right time, um, especially when you get in 1v4 and 1v5. Because if you're playing GF uh, and you're playing fairly tanky, people are, people are going to try to focus you down, especially if you got a bunch of squishy people in your team and your squishy teammates just die. Um, then, you know, in like four seconds, all of a sudden you find yourself surrounded like 1v5ing the enemy team. So there's a lot of heals in my builds uh, I did recently just put on tactical enchantments um, it's really just the best utility slot the reason I left these in are because this is the one choice you have pretty much is just gonna be tactical as you can see mine are just rank eights so if you got higher ones then good you you know you're, you're doing better than I am um, let's see uh, you can use armor in uh, I forgot what they're called. Armor enchantment. Let me see. Hold on, real quick. Armor reinforcement kit. Sorry. You can use armor reinforcement kits to boost your stuff a little bit further. I would recommend uh, combat advantage. Um. So it's been a while since I made a uh, a build video, so I'm gonna try. I'll try to stay organized from here on out. Um, I do want you to note before I get into the nitty gritties of what this build is kind of about. Uh, this artifact um, today is, let me see, uh, June 19th, 2019. Um, if this artifact is not healing you for a shit ton of HP, then chances are you're watching this video in the future. Um, and it's probably just been the healing's just been reduced so if this artifact uh is not fixed then you will definitely have a ton of healing this artifact i would highly recommend for until they fix it or until they nerf the healing on it i would highly recommend using this for your main uh the reason initially why i grabbed this artifact was because of the power and the defense um i would recommend that your top priority stats that you will want to build is going to be uh, power obviously power um, HP and defense not so much deflect not so much combat advantage I mean you can if you want like if you want to build combat advantage it's not bad it's definitely a good stat to build um, but if you're just a, a power hungry slut and you know that's what you want to do then then do that uh, the ability scores I went with was Constitution for the HP and um, ability power and stamina regen and damage boost. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. So I see a lot of people running the demo set. Now if you are running the Demogorgon set, which the neck, the waist, and the artifact, 
I want you, you know you might have heard that it's the best DPS uh, set whatever whatever I want you to take note of something here that's very very important um, and if you have no idea what I'm talking about then then just disregard what I'm gonna say um, just note that the equip bonus for this uh, if, as you can see, it increases your action points by 4% every 2 seconds while in combat. I want you to just keep that in mind because your dailies, especially uh, Mowdown, does a ton, a ton of damage. A ton of damage. So, if you are running the demo set in PvP... I would recommend to you that you switch to a different set. You, if you got Lost Mouth, switch to Lost Mouth, because that still gives you AP. Any other set, basically, that's relevant stat-wise and gives you the action points while you're in combat, I would highly, highly recommend you use that set. Um, it is huge. It really, really is a big deal. Because it's not even just for Modown. Like, when people as uh, associate AP with with dailies they they usually think of especially as a gf main i would think of mowdown right don't forget about uh second wind it used to be called fighters recovery second wind this increases your maximum hp by 20 percent by 20 percent that's that's a big deal because you pop it and it's like an instant heal as far as your health bar goes your health bar just goes up like a like a lot um it's it's a big deal, dude. It, it, the heals you get are not so much because you have to take damage in order to get a heal, and the heal doesn't isn't as much as the damage you're receiving. So it just kind of gives you. It's like when you know you're about to take a shit ton of damage, you want to pop this. If you are having a hard time killing people in the match, just don't even don't even waste your time throwing mow downs because. Um, second wind, if you find yourself just playing more defensively and you're not really getting kills, um, and especially because you don't really know what's going on yet and you want to just practice shielding and walking around and how to position yourself and how to block from a, a TR who's trying to dodge and get behind you and hit you with a quick stun, you know, like, these, these are all important things that you need to practice. Don't just focus only on power and stats and DPS because you go out there and your DPS is nothing if you die. It's nothing if you die. And that's why all of my builds for years now have not been just solely centered around DPS. Honestly, DPS isn't the number one thing that I build towards. Um, I, I really like to build a lot of healing because even if I'm really tanky, it's only a matter of time before I die, right? So I'd rather be decently tanky and have a shit ton of heals because, um, one, I have Shadowclad, which I would highly recommend if you don't have Shadowclad, get a Shadowclad and, and make sure it's high enough... Uh, rank so that way the invisibility procs because that's really the, the 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 big deal about it like yeah okay the the um damage resistance is is good but the the invisibility is basically 100 percent damage resistance because the enemy not only can they not see you so they stop chasing you or they stop hitting you or whatever but if you're invisible and they can hit you then that's that's like having 100 percent damage resistance you know the invisibility isn't just about I mean, just isn't just about going invisible, you know, it's also about the perks of invisibility, which is that you don't get hit, or that you can't get hit, unless somebody's got cheesy vision item or something, um, you can make a clean escape, you know, or if you use my build, um, or you build a shit ton of healing like I do, when you go invisible, by the time you come out of invisibility, you gained a bunch of HP back, you know, I, I, my builds are about capitalizing on small windows of time, it's heavy burst, so, as you can see, I'm still using Into the Fray. The reason I use Into the Fray is not for the speed. Um, it's literally just because it restores your stamina. So, I will not use Into the Fray until I'm taking a bunch of damage and I need to restore my stamina. Um, that is the only time you want to use Into the Fray. Unless you know for a fact that you will have it up in time for the next fight, you can use it for movement speed. But I would recommend um, just saving your Into the Fray only for... Uh, defense um like to defend yourself uh bull charge don't forget to use bull charge at extremely long ranges it has a very very long range um you it's like a it really is like a ranged attack <laughs> it's like the length of what lunging strike used to be um 
you can use this because people don't think you know CWs don't think to shift when they're so far away from you you know like because people aren't really expecting you to bull charge them from the second floor you know they might be up on the second floor you're on the first floor you know you're a guardian fighter they think you're just some dumb piece of meat and they just start bullying you from the top lane guess what guess what motherfucker I got a ball charge and and when they're standing up there on that ledge and you ball charge them off one they're gonna fly off the ledge if you angle it right and two, I guarantee the next time they're up there, they're gonna think twice. <laughs> they're gonna think twice before how they position up there when they go to hit you because they do not want you to not to knock them down. When people play like that on the second floor, um, they do not want you to knock them down. Uh, okay, so ebonized ring. Uh, this gives me offense slots and melee powers do three percent more damage. Uh, you do not need this ring. You know, it's there's a. There's a chance you might not have gotten this ring yet from doing the MEs. You know, everything here is, y you can fluctuate. Um, if you don't have these artifacts, then don't use these artifacts. That's, it's fine. You know, if, if you don't have rank 13 enchantments, don't use rank 13s. You know, I mean, obviously you don't have a choice. Um, but, you know, don't, don't feel bad about not having all the best stuff. And don't, don't necessarily bypass things in the game that would otherwise you know be an opportunity for you to have fun just so you could try to get to you know super late game because yeah um you know you're not going to do as much dps but you can still build tanky and i would i would rather see a bunch of guardian fighters out there who are tanky and if you're newbie then just go tank just go tank your things you know just do what you gotta do to survive because it's not gonna do anybody any good if you got decent DPS and no survivability. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'd rather um, see you guys out there with no DPS and a, and, a, and a pretty good amount of survivability because then you'll get the feel of how to play defensive. Um, if you get the feel of how to play defensive and uh, you, you you get used to how to do rotations, like even if you know your your, your rotations aren't gonna do damage, do them anyways because. You, the more you practice how to do your rotations, the quicker you, you'll get at it. The more efficient you'll get at it. The uh, the quicker you can animation cancel and 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 throw your your daily into an anvil before the daily's even over, or or when to bull charge people. You know, get get used to bull charging people just so you can prone them. Like do, just consider that a success. You don't have to kill people to for it to count it as a success. You can just bull charge a CW when he dodges. Um, and try to time it perfectly so that way even if he tries to dodge immediately you'll still hit him because after they dodge like CWs, uh, DCs, um, TRs, after they dodge they're locked in place for a certain period of time. So you want to get used to learning when to bull charge people because later on when you do get good DPS now you know how to play your character and get the rotations off. You know what I'm saying? And if anything it's better that you don't do damage uh, at the beginning because then you have more of an opportunity to do the, to do the rotations over and over and over It's like even if even if you you kill them every time like you still got to go find them now. You know what I'm saying like It's it's not a bad thing to not do DPS. It's 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 okay. Like don't take it personally Don't get mad. Just take it as an opportunity to do more training consistently you got, That's the only way to think about it. You got to change your views on things and um Try to have an open mind because a lot of people who aren't late game and want to get into PvP, they get all discouraged because they don't go in there and kill everybody. Of course you're not going to go in there and kill everybody. It's just not going to happen. Especially right not right now, um, as you will probably notice that people are pretty tanky. So you got to have a, a really good amount of uh, DPS built if you plan on killing people. And you got to use your full combo in, in, you know, in pretty much like perfect sequence because... If you don't lock down that, that uh, cleric and get your full combo off, chances are she's going to heal herself back up to full health before you can finish the rest of your combo. And then your combo is not going to kill her anymore. So just get used to doing your rotations. Get really comfortable with it. Um, only use moves that CC people besides Anvil. The only reason you really use Anvil is just because it hits for a shit ton of damage. That's basically it. If you want to play more offensive, switch uh, Shield Slam with Into the Fray. You will have less stamina, um, you will move a little bit slower, but you will gain an AoE knockdown, and it's really good uh, if you want to chain CC with your other abilities. Um, it's, you know, good for...
for uh, you know you AOE down the whole enemy team. That's gonna help your team get all of your or all of their abilities off without the enemy dodging them. These are the boons that I chose. These this isn't really that necessary. Um, the ones that I would really really recommend to you would be the HP ones, the movement speed one, um, and the recovery speed one. Uh, if you can get, you know, the amount of boons that I have, then, you know, you can go for these, um, all of these stats. You can switch over into damage instead of defense. These two columns here, um, I have, you know, defense. I have more of a defensive E type-ish build. It's kind of a hybrid build. Um, I noticed that if you, like, let's say you have 100% of your build, right? If you spend, let's say... 30% on healing, 30% uh, on defense, and then 40% on D uh, DPS. That's a pretty pretty fair ratio, or 50% DPS, and then 25% defense, and then 25% healing. Um, you know, that that's just, like a, I guess like a rule of thumb, that would probably be the kind of ratio that I, that I keep. Um, it's... You know, if you if you don't have as much stats, then ratios is is important. You know, knowing knowing the ratio of how to allocate your the stats that you do have is is a big deal. Um, do keep in mind that I don't know if this is intended or if this will sometimes or uh, someday change in the future, but keep in mind that um, these actives down here do apply in PvP. Um, these will give you direct stats in pvp so just keep that in mind you know go through these um if you got good pve build then that's great because chances are you got really good companions especially for dps if you got some um by the way if you don't know the ion s stone of might i think it is gives you power in a defense slot um and deflection the minstrel companion gives you power and awareness and the, I think this is the Laughing Skull, I'm not sure, whatever skull this is, uh, gives you defense and combat advantage. That's a, a big deal, because defense is a, is a good stat you want to build, you want to build power. Uh, defense, you can, you know, having a lot of armor pen is very good, because people are building a lot of defense ability. As, you, as you'll see, killing a paladin is like, it, it's, it's hard. Killing a paladin is hard, especially when, you know, they're all going to, like, super defense type builds. Um, it's pretty hard. Uh, clerics are pretty hard because they, they discovered that they can go full tank and, uh, and, and heal themselves back up to full HP and you'll never be able to kill them unless you get a really, really good full combo off of them. I mean, if I went full glass cannon, no defense, all offense, I could probably kill them pretty easy. But, um, then I'm, oh my god, what was that? <laughs> Somebody just described it. Uh, Avi Bushwitz. If you're watching this video, dude, you just subscribed while I was recording it, and it scared the shit out of me. So, good for you, man. Um, I don't remember where I was. Combat advantage is pretty good. Uh, these are just the stats you want to build. Don't worry about building accuracy, deflect, awareness, crit avoidance, crit strike. Um, you don't really even have to build armor pen, to be honest. You could just use the armor pen boon, and that'll be fine. So just where you can build things, build combat advantage, defense, and power, and, uh, you know, obviously HP. HP, if you aren't already aware of this, um, HP... It, it determines how much shield you have. See over here where, where your shield bar is. Your shield uh, is determined by half of your HP, I believe is what it comes out to. I, I could be wrong. Um, but so basically, um, if I have, let's just say for easy maths, I have 300,000 HP. My shield has an HP value of 150,000. So you have to chew through 150,000 um uh, HP basically to get through my shield and then once you do that I'm going to use my into the fray and I'm going to get 150,000 more HP that you have to get through so into the fray is a big deal um, when people blow their full combo off on you and your shield eats it that's a big deal so you want to make sure that you are 
um, finding your own way to keep your shield up as long as possible because when somebody blows their full combo, now they got really long cooldowns. So they're just you just walk up to them, you can play some mind games with them, you know, walk up real close, let them think you're gonna bull charge them and they'll waste their stamina. And then once they're out of stamina and their abilities are still off cooldown, then you pounce on them. You know what I'm saying? It's it's a lot of there's a lot of mind games, there's a lot of things that happen behind the scenes, especially when I'm playing, I'm thinking about the next move ahead of time. And that'll just that'll just come with time and experience. That'll you'll you'll feel it out. For the uh, mounts, um, stable bonus mount bonuses, whatever they are, um, don't be discouraged if you don't have orange. It's it's okay. Um, if you don't have orange insignias, I would recommend then just going for prosperity and whatever ones give you good defense ability. Um, I don't know where I put my other orange ones, so I'm using a green. Uh, I wouldn't use these for DPS, um, especially if they're purple because you could just get purple ones. And uh, if you're new, I would recommend getting defense ability ones. But if you do know what you're doing, you're late game, you got orange ones, you just want to go out there and wreck shit, just build DPS wherever you can. Um, however, keep in mind that these bonuses are pretty good. If you notice, they're all healing besides uh, Gladiator's Ghoul. Um... This is because uh, they interact, I believe, with the tactical enchantments. I could be wrong, um, but I heal for a lot. As you, if you have seen any of my my PvP videos, when I'm taking a lot of damage, you'll see my shadow clad will pop. I'll go invisible. I'll heal for a fuck ton of HP. By the time I come out of invisibility and the enemy can see me, they see I'm almost up to full health, and that's that's, that's very discouraging for them because they just spent a long time trying to kill me. They got pretty close, and then I went invisible. And then when I came out of invisibility, they thought they were going to finish me off, and then I had 80% of my HP back. So it's very discouraging when you're trying to kill somebody and they just heal like through all of your damage. It's very discouraging. Uh, trust me, I know, because I, <laughs> I try to kill paladins all the time, and they give me a hard time, and it's very frustrating for me. And I know that it's got to be even more frustrating for somebody else, especially knowing that I can kill them. So you try to kill me, you know, you get me pretty low, I heal it all back, I heal everything back, um, and then, you know, you just regen a shit ton in between fights. Um, the other reason why I heal so much is because with the Swift Golden Lion mount, which is this boy right here, is a beautiful boy. This, this beautiful, wise face has blessed me. I don't even know for how long this mount has been out. Um, it's been a long time. This mount is beautiful. It gives you, obviously, you've probably seen the lion. Uh, I don't have any enemies. The lion that comes down in, in the middle of the fight and gives you a bunch of temp HP. Huge deal. Huge deal. Obviously, the, the, the shield is a big deal that it gives you. It just gives you like a blue bar on top of your health bar. That's a big deal. Um, but it also knocks enemies down. And that's huge. That is freaking huge. It also gives the shield to your teammates. Uh, keep in mind though that you have to be in a party with somebody so if you just see a random out in like I don't know some PvE map and they're just having a hard time you can't drop lion on them it won't give them a the shield unless they're in your party so it's only for party members that that will also get the shield um, there's other bonuses to it like the radiant weapon thing whatever so it, get, it gives you like some bonus additional damage uh, but that's not even why I use it the fact that it prones enemies is really why I wanted it to begin with because if a GF is walking at you or a paladin is walking at you and they have their shield up as far as you're concerned they're immune to CC right because because they have their shield up so you could ball charge them you could daily them you could shield slam them whatever you want to do it's not gonna do shit because they're gonna be um, immune to CC however with this mount active um, when you cast line on an enemy like a GF or a paladin who has their immune CC immunity in the front of them, the back of them is exposed. And if they're walking at you, the animation time of this mount active, when the lion comes in, it, it, it has an animation time, right? So if they continue to walk forward, by the time the animation of the lion is done, the lion spawns behind them. So it prones them towards you. So it knocks them towards you 
and prones them. So now they come, they get knocked towards you from behind, and they're on the ground. And then you just got an easy pickings, dude. Then it's just like Paladin Buffet, dude. Then you just go ham, you know. You could just, you don't even need to bullet charge them at first. You could just, just, just simply walk up, daily them, and then bullet charge them, which is even better because then you get AP from your bullet charge, or at least you're supposed to. It doesn't seem like that's working for some reason. I'm not sure. Uh, I could be wrong, but for the longest time since Neverwinter's been out, um, you you know you gain a AP for for using abilities and stuff. Um, so if you could use your daily first, then that's better because uh, then you'll get your daily back faster, theoretically. Um, let's see. I'm not sure what I'm missing. Consumables. Oh, let's grab these. Let's see if I get anything. Oh my god, I got garbage. Yes. All right. So I want to just briefly talk about enchantments. Uh, a lot of people are probably going to have questions about the enchantment thing. So um I want you to notice here that uh this enchantment is a rank 14 enchantment that gives me 1200 of each of these stats. So that's 2,400 stats. This enchantment gives me 1,300 and 2,650. So that's 13, so that's 2,600 stats. This is an enchantment that gives me one stat, gives me 2,160. So, um, three stat enchantments technically are better than two and one stat enchantments. Um, because, you know, obviously you're just, you're getting more stat, right? So if I have zero stats to start with, and I have only one black ice enchantment on, I have 1,300 power, 650 crit strike, and 650 accuracy. If I'm fighting somebody else who has a vicious, they, are, they only have 1,200 power, so I have more power, but they have 1,200 armor pen, so they will have more armor pen than I would, even if my... Enchantment gave 650 armor pen instead. Um, that I, they would still have more armor pen. Um, and then here, if this gave me power, armor pen, whatever, whatever, they would have the most of that one stat. So don't think of it necessarily as, um, you know, it's more stats, therefore it's better. Because if you, the reason why one stat enchantments are good especially just for this mod, is because if you are pretty much capping out, which there's a, a pretty good debate about what, what is capped and what's not, and is there a cap and is there not a cap, the cap goes based on the enemies you're fighting. So enemies could have, like, whatever stats. So, you know, technically there's no cap, but whatever. It goes into this whole argument. Um, but basically, if you want to maximize the amount of one specific stat you would go with the single stat enchantment. If you want to maximize two stats, then you want to go with a two stat. I know that sounds dumb, maybe if you already know that, but for people who don't know why three stat enchantments are better and when they're better, um, you know, it, that might, hopefully that makes sense to you. The good thing about these three stats is that the initial stat that they gives it is still a pretty good amount. Um, you know, even though it's, let's see, 800 and something 860 I guess less uh, or 700 yeah 860 stat less power if this was to give me power with a single stat um, it is still a lot more uh, of stats overall so offense slots if you really want to you know be um, I don't know power is good for offense I'll just leave it at that you can you there's no problem even if you want to be tanky there is no problem throwing all of your offense slot uh, uh, radiance for offense um, if you want to throw in some things for armor pen or whatever by all means you know I'm not gonna tell you what to do uh, I, I can just tell you from my experience what is good for defense slots this is this gets a little tricky because 
you know, then you have to decide, is, do you want to max more defense? Do you want to max more HP? You want more whatever, whatever. Um, to be honest, I just kind of play it safe. And I use, I think I use the black ice for, let me just see. Um, defense, deflection, and crit avoidance. Honestly, uh, I think there's one that gives you HP and defense and then something else. That one's probably better, in my opinion, because it would give you HP and defense. Uh, however, if you want to just use your defense boon and then put all of your defense enchantments in as radiance for HP, then do that. Um, chances are you probably got rid of your blue enchantments, your azures, but if you still have those, you can use those for defense if you want to maximize defense there and then use your HP boon. Um, things are, you know, it, it's not black or white. There's a lot of gray areas, what's, you know, what's best, what's not best. Um, this is just my opinion and my advice. Um, I'm not sure if I missed anything specifically. I could just double check everything here. Uh, I'm pretty sure that even if I didn't go over everything that you can at least see them um, yeah I don't think I'm missing anything oh well, I guess I can go through the consumables so the more power you have the more watermelon uh, sorbet sorbet sherbet is worth it's like as it'll give you a percentage of your power accuracy who cares um, but it, so the more power you have, the more these are worth it. Uh, also, Caprice is good because it does give you flat 3% deflection chance, but it also gives you a decent amount of uh, HP. Uh, I wish that the anniversary ham still worked. However, I don't think that it does, which is very sad because I, I don't really, I'm not sure if it ever did work for GF. But I know for a lot of classes that Anniversary Hams is uh, really, really good to have. Also, another uh, consumable that I don't see people using is Red Veins. The Neverwinter Red Veins. You, you get 1% of your HP every 3 seconds, right? So, if I have 300,000 HP, then I'm getting 3,000 HP every 3 seconds. Right, so if we're fighting for 30 seconds, uh, I just got 30,000 HP, I believe is what the math works out to. I could be just an idiot. Maybe I'm, I don't know, you do the math. When you're, when you're fighting for, uh, you know, a, a minute and a half with people, and you're getting 1% of your HP every 3 seconds, you do the math, dude. It's, it's an underestimated consumable. Um, then you got your power... Uh, potions don't worry about deflect potions if you don't want to use powered potions you can use defense potions that's that's still good and uh, full hammers I think is the best let me see Yep. Yeah, I think uh, that the Faux Hammers is good because um, it increases your deflection severity. So it has like a double effect on it. So it gives you, not only do you get more deflection, and you'll also get deflection from uh, Caprice if you're using it and other things. Um, but it also increases the severity by 10%, which is, a, you know, that's good if you... I, I use it, even though I'm going DPS builds, um, I still... Most of the time I use healing and defense uh, consumables because I just, you want to be, you want to basically, if you, if you do a full combo on somebody and you do more damage than how much HP they have, then you're wasting DPS. I know that that might sound silly, but if I do 12 damage and this guy only takes 10 damage to kill, then I have two damage too high because now... Uh, I could have those that two damage instead of being put into offense. I could have it be put into healing or defense. You know what I mean? I don't know if that makes any sense, but you wanna you wanna allocate your things evenly. So if you go into a match and you're just dying too fast, then take some DPS away and put it into healing or put it into like if you get bursted, 
go into uh, HP and defense. If if you just can't keep your HP up, then you know obviously then you're going to go into more healing. So it's going to take multiple matches. You just queue and queue and queue and queue and over and over and over. Even if there's no queues popping, you know, ask people to to queue. If if you want to uh, find people, go into this channel. Go down to uh, your um, your settings for your chat channel or your chat box. It's in the top left corner. Go to custom channels and type here PVP training session and this button will be highlighted and said jo says join and then you are going to go into this PVP training session channel it is open you can join there and just ask anybody uh, if if they want to do some some private training with you or just grab some buddies or just find somebody to go into into a private queue with if you don't know how to do that it's the same as everything else but you're just going to click private pvp and then you can right click somebody and change their team and it'll move them to team two or team one whichever one um and then you're just going to go into a private queue private domination you can go into what i mean any of these three maps um Domination is the smallest, Gone to Grimm's is the second smallest, and then Stronghold is the biggest or the third smallest, however you want to think about that. Um, I don't think I'm missing anything else. Uh, let me just see. Um, for DPS, you want to always grab items that give you th uh, percent damage increases. That In most cases, that'll be better than straight up power increases not by percentage but like gaining 250 power for each enemy in your team and like in this case um if you don't have legendary mounts don't stress like whatever you don't have don't stress about it you'll get there eventually just take it one step at a time i've been playing this game since 2013 i have uh, i have, i played many 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 hours in this game and I didn't get here you know all at once you know it, it everything was just one at a time one at a time one at a time how do you eat an elephant you know how to eat an elephant one bite at a time you're gonna eat that elephant one bite at a time so this elephant this elephant right here you're gonna eat him one bite at a time that's how you gotta look at it that's the only way to do it is one step at a time and I mean, there's, you know, don't get overwhelmed. Don't get stressed out. Don't try to rush it. Don't swipe that card unless you know exactly what it is you're going for. So you don't waste anything, any resources, any money. Um, if you're gonna swipe that card, swipe that card. And uh, I don't know. It's probably not the best time to swipe cards for this game, in my opinion. But look, there's a lot of new people. Uh, maybe you know, if you're new to this game. Or new-ish to this game, you're starting to want to get into the PvP side of things. You know, I mean, more power to you, dude. More power to you. If you got the money to do it, if you just got money to waste and blow on this. I mean, I don't know. In a way, it's if you know you're going to be playing the game, you know, and you don't want to waste fucking time just and frustration going out and trying to get certain things, then swipe the card, dude. Who cares, man? I've, I've spent money on this game. I'm not going to sit up here and lie and act like I'm not... Like, well, I'm not paid to win because, you know, I really haven't spent that much money on this game. But I did buy things that I needed. You know, there was, I bought um, things necessary so I can get the funds to buy my lion. You know, like, that's 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 how you're going to do things. I look how many legendary mounts, you know what I mean? I didn't just get lucky in, in lockboxes, you know, for my VIP keys and stuff. Like, you know, if, if you want to get all the best stuff, like, you either got to allocate a shit ton of time and have a lot of patience or you are just drop some dough, get it, and be excited like a little schoolgirl for like a month and a half, two months, and you know, and you just binge use that item over and over and over and over like I did when I got my lion, yo, I just lion people for no fucking reason, dude. For no reason. I would just lion mobs, whatever, dude, for a long time. I would just lion people over and over whenever it was up because I thought it was funny. I thought it was hilarious, and I, I just loved it, and, and I wanted the lion so bad for a, a really long time. And uh, when I finally got it, dude, I was so excited. And, you know, when, when, preserve your excitement. When you're excited about something, then just milk it, dude. Milk it. Milk it like a fat, pregnant cow, dude. Just 
milk it. Get all the get all the fun and excitement out that you possibly can. If you have more fun playing an oppressor CW or uh, whatever it's called, a, a, a mage. Let me see. What is it called? A wizard. If you like playing wizard, sometimes and and you just want to choke people and and just repel them and freeze them and CC them over and over and over and over from the second floor, then just do that, man. Just do that. But just know that if, if you do that to me, I got a bull charge waiting waiting for you. And your chances are you'll probably come down to the first floor.